سبحان الله يا الله الله أكبر Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the world of Islam coming to you from Manchester, New Hampshire in the United States of America. From Denmark to China, from Australia to Argentina, from the USA to the UK, there are more than 1.5 billion Muslims in the world today. The religion of Islam is the fastest growing religion on earth, but unfortunately the true nature of Islam is often misrepresented and misunderstood. So I invite you to join us as we travel throughout the world of Islam and give you the opportunity to know the truth about Islam and the truth about Muslims. You are now entering the world of Islam. And I'm in the Islamic Society of New Hampshire in the masjid here, and I'm joined by one of my brothers in Islam, Brother Joel Underwood. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And thank you for agreeing to sit with us and spend some time with us and share with us your story, how you came to Islam and uh, how you were attracted to Islam. But as we begin, I want to know how you came to Islam, but I want to know a bit about your life before you came to Islam, before you started to study Islam, up to the point where you began to study Islam. Um, I suppose uh, it's easiest to say I was a typical American who had been raised as a Christian of some variety. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I definitely believe in God, and I was a serious person. Um, when I was reading the Christian Bible, I would read it very carefully and critically and try to understand, you know, what it would offer. And uh, from there, I sort of migrated through a number of thought processes, you know, as I grew older, trying to understand my life. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I didn't really have any exposure to Islam. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any Muslims. Even when you went to college and all these things, you never? <clears throat> I was not aware, aware of it at all. Mm -hmm. I went to a college in uh, the northeast of the U.S. that was predominantly white from the New England area. Mm -hmm. There was very little diversity in schools back then. Mm -hmm. And so my coming to, to Islam was really my own uh, journey that um, came about in a way that I could never imagine. So I think you explained it that you were kind of in complete isolation. You had never been exposed to Muslims. You had never seen an example of a Muslim. It just came to you. Allah, He just guided you to Islam. It, it is uh, something almost that simple, but um, I came to uh, pick up the Quran before I was going to make a trip to Morocco. Mm -hmm. And I thought I would find a little, little bit about the culture of, of an Islamic country mm -hmm. that, so that I could be polite and know how to behave. I didn't know what the Quran contained. I didn't know what the message of the Quran was. Uh, I'd never seen the Quran. Mm -hmm. So I spent some six months before the trip mm -hmm. uh, reading the Quran, going on to the internet and so forth. Let me forth. ask you about the Quran, because mm -hmm. now this was t two years ago or three years ago? Uh, two years, yeah. And this was after 9-11. Yes. Everyone's talking about Islam and about Muslims, but still you had never really heard about the Quran. Well, I knew it existed as a religious book, mm -hmm. but I had never seen it and I didn't know what it contained. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the message of the Quran was. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Christians have a sense of the books that are in the Bible, you know, the Old Testament, the New Testament. But I didn't know that the Quran would fit in with any of the history 
mm -hmm. of the Christians or the Jews. I didn't know how it all worked together. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I read through the Quran the first time, and because of the, you know, the richness of the Quran from someone from the outside, they don't really know what the references are. Mm -hmm. They don't know what exactly they're reading. Uh, you know, when you hear about the year of the elephant, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, unless you have some education about it. And so through time, I became curious enough and I saw an advertisement by this uh, society here in Manchester for mm -hmm. a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what I would find, but I thought this is a good way maybe for me to meet a Muslim and find out. And before you saw that ad, it. did you know there were Muslims in Manchester? Not really. I didn't have any uh, awareness of them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there was nothing in the newspaper periodically that would would give you much clue. Mm -hmm. And New Hampshire is, you know, mostly white people from mm -hmm. the Northeast, so it's not a very diverse uh, mm -hmm. area that way. Mm -hmm. Um, now, when you came here, was that before or after your your trip on to Morocco? After. Okay, and how was that trip? The trip to Morocco. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, which wh trip? <laughs> <laughs> now you said you were reading the Quran just to yes. know a bit about the culture before you went on that trip. Before I was going on the trip with my wife okay. to Morocco, I right. made a separate trip to Morocco just just this year. Mm -hmm. That's a different trip. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my original. Um, Curiosity of the Quran was before um, was of the trip mm -hmm. going to Morocco with my wife uh, mm -hmm. a motorcycle trip. Right. So um, reading it beforehand, and then after what took place there with a motorcycle accident and so on, we had to come home early, mm -hmm. and my interest continued. And then when I met some people here, I started to get some more sources of information to learn, what books to look at, and uh, I met some of the brothers here from the Masjid who welcomed me to come to listen to uh, some Quran studies. Mm -hmm. and, and how did you feel? How were you received by the brothers here? I was received just like anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no prejudice towards me. There was no, like, what are you doing here? You know, you don't, be, you don't fit in. You know, mm -hmm. what, is your, what is your problem? What are mm -hmm. you coming here for? Right. <coughs> they were uh, more than cordial. They were very welcoming and say, how can we help you? Mm -hmm. and, in, and very soon from coming a few times, uh, other brothers would, would say, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. Let me help you figure out your prayers or here is here's something that I've learned. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I couldn't have been uh, received you know, more warmly actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you came here for a time, and you still weren't Muslim. You just came here just to, to better understand Islam, because you said earlier you're a serious person. So yes. I guess you were taking the study of Islam seriously at that point. E exactly. I, I was looking at it as here's something that if you decide to become a Muslim, you have read and you know that that is a lifetime decision, and that you do not just try it out and say I'm a Muslim for a couple of years and say, oh, well, that was too hard for me. Mm -hmm. And now I will go back to whatever. That is, that is one of the big problems that most people have with religion is they want to have cafeteria style. Mm -hmm. They want to only pick the parts that are easy. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that's not the, the authentic way. Mm -hmm. And so I knew the commitment that I would have to make would mm -hmm. be a lifetime one and that if I was going to make that commitment, I had to really 